Hello, I have an irregularly shaped plastic object that I want to determine the identity of. And it's suspended from this hook here. And I want to identify it by weighing it in air. It's right in air right now. And I'm going to let it settle down. Okay, well, it's still wavering a little bit. I'm just going to call it 123.662. Okay, now I'm going to carefully add water to the measuring cup. Let's see what happens. You can see that the mass is going down. Submerge it. You'll notice once I completely submerge it, the mass doesn't change anymore. Okay. Um, the water in there is causing it to uh, dampen the vibration or swinging. There are some air bubbles. Um, some air bubbles that will lead to a little bit of an error, but let's not worry about that. Okay, it looks like it's going all the way down the mass to 65.71. So it went from 123.62 to 65.71. It got much lighter, and <clears throat> this is because the um, water displaced by the object uh, creates a buoyant force and uh, the, the mass of the water displaced um, uh, makes it lighter by that amount. So let's analyze the data. Okay, let's see how we're going to analyze this. First of all, we weighed the object in air, and the force on the object in air, we're going to really do, disregard any buoyancy due to air. The force in air is the mass of the object to, times the gravitational, the acceleration due to gravity, mg. Now, I, I do want you to remember that uh, the volume of the object and the volume of the water displaced are the same, okay? So the force in air is the density times the volume of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. It's equal to the density times volume times g and the mass. It's also equal to the mass times g. But do remember that the, that as we do the next part, that the volume of the object and the volume of the water displaced are the same. So in a sense, the mass of the object is proportional to the density of the object. And we'll see that the mass of the water displaced will be proportional to the density of the water. Because both volumes, both volume of the object and the volume of the water displaced are the same. Right now, let's measure the Let's examine the gravitational force when the object is in water. So the force in water is the force on the object minus the buoyant force due to the water displacement. So the force in water is the density of the object times the volume of the object, that's the mass, times acceleration due to gravity. And the buoyant force 
is the density of the water displaced times the volume of the object, because the volume of the object is the volume of the water displaced times j. So replacing density times volume with mass, the force in water is the mass of the object times g minus the mass of the water displaced times g, okay? Now, if we subtract the two forces, the force in air and the force in water, the, the mass of the object is going to go out, okay? And we'll be left with the density times volume of the water times the acceleration due to gravity or the mass of the water displaced times the acceleration due to gravity. So in these equations, it's important to remember since volume and g are the same um, for both water and the object, um, the mass and the densities are proportional. So if we take the ratio of the force in air and the difference between the force in air and the force in water, we'll be looking at the, the ratio of the densities and the ratio of the masses, which is the specific gravity. Now, we're going to measure the masses, all right, uh, and set them equal to the ratio of the densities. So the force in air minus the difference in the forces is equal to, we measured 123 in mass ratios, 123.62 grams for the object and the difference in mass when it's in air versus water is 59 57.91. So basically, this is the mass of the object, and this is the mass of the water displaced. And they're equal to the ratio of the densities, and we get 2.13. So the specific gravity uh, is 2.13. It's about it has a density of about 2.13, this object, which is a high density for a plastic thing. That's, if you look up the specific gravity, Teflon has the highest uh, of any, uh, most uh, plastics, uh, most polymers, and it's uh, in range of 2.1 to 2.2. So uh, it felt like uh, Teflon, it had a smooth, slick surface, and uh, the agreement is very good. So I hope that's clear, and uh, um, I'll see you next time.